Sponsored by your local Toyota dealer and Sterling Savings Bank, KXLY 4HD and Friday Night Sports Extra bring you the best seat in the house for high school football. Friday Night Sports Extra starts right now. Welcome to another edition of Friday Night Sports Extra. It's still early in the season, but you're starting to see how these leagues are starting to shape up. A few upsets along the way tonight. And if you're me, you got a chance to see the whole state of Washington <laughs> pretty much tonight, and it was very, very beautiful. We'll see that in a little bit. You thought we were joking with the cheerleaders last week about pointing up towards Canada. <laughs> One thing I've learned about you is that you never joke with no, stuff like I that. I do That's not joke about this program. We'll also check in at Kayla's Corner over there. No joke for Kayla. And the battle between Keith and Kayla continues. East Valley, West Valley. We'll see how that all shook out tonight. We take you to the stadiums. Shadle, or I should say Ferris and Mount Spokane. Yep, they traded us a hot dog for the hat. The only problem is whoever shot that game didn't bring it back. we got to talk about that. Uh, Derek Goulet hey, takes the handoff and fumbles, but Andrew Wegland recovers. That led to this drive. Ferris is Connor Holiday to Jordan Tanani. How do you spell Tanani? Touchdown! No, down to the five-yard line. Then it's Halliday, the keeper, in from five yards out, 7 nothing at that point at Ferris. Mount Spokane quarterback Travis Ward picked off by Weglin. A fumble recovery, now an interception. He could be the Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Week for that kind of stuff. <laughs> Halliday finds Garrett Siaki, and the Ferris Saxons jump out to the quick lead and then hang on and beat most Mount Spokane. 30 to 22. How about North Central and Mead? Ah. <laughs> Joe Albee, he would have loved Friday Night Sports Extra. He's got a hat now. Mead already up 7 0 on North Central, and Matt, uh, Max Kaiser throws to Ryan LaFort for the touchdown there, and the mighty M's with the lead. More Panthers this time on the ground. Zach Eglin, look at him go! 55 yards. Pick up the popcorn bowl because he stepped right in as he went past you. Meade goes on to win big. First time North Central shut out this season, but the Indians lose for the fourth time, 45-0. CV with a big win last week over LC, a chance to add to that this week. And remember, we're trading hats. We did yes, not yes. trade a hat for that no. car. We tried. We did not get it done. CV no. got it done early, though. Tyler Simmett, nice run up the gut, punches into the end zone. 7 to nothing Bears. More CV. Get used to that. More CV. Blake Bledsoe. Looking deep, and this is about as pretty a ball as you can throw in high school. Finds Brad Whitley for the score. 14 to nothing Bears. CV pretty much putting this one away in the first half. Bledsoe to JC Agan. He's in for six. CV goes on to win this one big at home. 43 to seven. They're in the driver's seat in the GSL. Staying in the valley. Rogers at U High. That's Rico Ochoa, the shock, trying to figure out how to keep the Rogers losing streak going. Rogers though looking for a win. That's Mark Douglas. He punches it in. It's 14-7. Rogers at the half looking for the win. But here comes U High in the second half. Tony Tabish to Thomas Walken. He's walking on in. Ties it up at 14 apiece. We switch the white balance a little bit. But watch this tackle. That's Jacob Partridge, the quarterback, playing defense. A nice hit there. Back to regular colors now. My camera back to normal. Putting it in is John Wright for U High. That wins the deal for U High. They go on to win it 21-14. to more GSL action, Lake City at Prep, and Prep hasn't played an Idaho team in a very long time. The Prep Bulldog wouldn't give the hat for the live saver, but he gives it to the fans instead. Nothing in this game. Quarterback Adam Fennenbach, though, gets sacked by Prep's Nick Lanou, and then this leads to this. Prep's Bishop Sankey, he tears the toss and goes 15 yards for the touchdown, then Prep's in the end zone, hands it off to John Comfort, and it's touchdown 7 nothing Prep. Lake City, though, Timberwolves, that is. They show a little teeth here. Prep Sankey is tackled for a loss by Michael Bodig, and then Lake City driving. Quarterback Adam Fennenbach throws to Julian Burgess. Gonzaga Prep goes on to win this one 21 to 13. Last night, East Valley and Lewis and Clark. Tigers celebrating homecoming. Not much to celebrate. 3 nothing Tigers, but Knights would take advantage of the Tiger fumble. Chris Zivic putting it in. It's 9-3 at the half. Knights, though, would dominate the second half. Zivic punches in from two yards out, and East Valley leads 16-3. to Nick Bellamy would rush for 133 yards on the night, but it would be three touchdowns by Zivic that leads the Knights. Oh my gosh, am I really saying this right now? 23 to 3, and I know there's not good news coming up for me later, Keith. <laughs> Foreshadowing. Yes, and uh, the news is I can no longer hear. Thank you very much, Keith. But at least the uh, happy news over there. Let's go to a couple of non league games. We've got Freeman in Lakeland. 
Let's see here. This is Freeman's quarterback. Luke Matthews going to throw for the touchdown. But the Hawks going to try to come right back on this one. Quarterback Riley Youngdell rolls out. He's going to find Jason Mobeck. Big gain down to the one yard line. It's kind of like the Oregon Ducks jerseys right there. That's going to set up a touchdown by Kyle McWright that ties the game up at sixes. Freeman's Tanner Lieb, as you can see, it looked like what? Fans giving him a cheer. Maybe this will kind of help him on out as Tanner leaves. Six yard leap into the end zone. Makes it 12 6. Freeman, more leave. This time he got six. Well, ball's down on the ground. There we go. It's 26 13 there as the Freeman Scotties win that one. Let's bounce over to another non league game here. 0 0 between Coeur and Centennial. Centennial in overtime. All defense for this one. You got the sack right there. And the Vikes defense comes up with the interception. At the end of regulation, I should say, that's Tom Breezal. He's going to make the pick. So we're going into OT here. Vikes first play of the second OT. Yeah, that looks pretty nice there. It's a long touchdown. You get the chest bump. What Dennis and Keith are doing right now. You see the ball there right there. Looks like goes into the end zone. And we've got a celebration there as a big win for Coeur d'Alene or Centennial in overtime. 14 to 13 over in the Inland Empire. Post falls. Big winners. They said they added a couple touchdowns late there. 54 35 over Sandpoint. Moses Lake uh, packed their bus and headed south down to the Tri Cities tonight to take on Pasco. That's the back of a referee's head. That's creative <laughs> shooting. Pasco frustrated by the Chiefs' defense all night. Carlin Anderson, just two of six. End zone broken up by Jagan Franks. Bulldogs forced to settle for a field goal. Brady Espinosa. It's gone! From 34 yards out, Pasco takes the lead, but it would be short-lived. Chiefs getting down to the three, and Josh Loetta pounds it in for six. He did it twice on the night, and the Chiefs, the bus ride is shaking and rattling and rolling going back home. They come up with a big win at Pasco, 14-3. I didn't hear Kayla earlier. Who won that 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 game last? <laughs> I don't remember who won that game. Was oh you know, God, if if, really? if West Valley loses coming up later in the show, maybe Kayla's going to have to put this on for the rest of the night. We'll have to take a look. We'll have to wait and see. I don't know what happened later. More Friday Night Sports Extra coming up right after this. Welcome back to Friday Night Sports Extra. We're going to give away an iPod a little bit later on, and we'll see what Kayla has on by the time we end this show. If West Valley doesn't win, she's going to look good in green and white, I think. Uh, Deer Park in Riverside, the short battle, it's homecoming here, and the freshman homecoming uh, prince, that's a good move on his part, took our hat for a lap. Wave, kid, and your banner fell off. Deer Park up 21-0 at the half. They decide to try some trickery. Despite the defense by Trevor Hoffman, he got the save, though, as the Padres went 1-2-3 in the ninth. <laughs> Alex Wolf would get it in. Another touchdown. The Deer Park stags. Deer Park stags. 31 to nothing. Tough night for the Rams of Riverside. How about Moscow and Lakeside? Yep. Lakeside's Monica, apparently like Cher, just one name, gave us a hat for a cheer. Fair trade. Second play of the game, Mike Washington. Look at him go. The big guy put, kicking up and putting it down for the Bears. 7 nothing Moscow at that point in time. Lakeside, Brady Blankenvort finds Brendan Heiser. He's going to dive it in for six points. Good effort there. Tied the game at seven. But after that, this one would be all Bears. Blankenvort is picked off by Jason Washington. And the Oscar Bears counting on the Washingtons. He goes back 80 yards. He's going to get it into the end zone. He's looking for an oxygen tent, but he makes it. And Moscow goes on to win it. Wow, 55 to 24. Other scores in the Intermountain League. Orfino gets the win at home, 26 to 9. St. Mary's a 27-6 winner over Bonners Ferry tonight at Bonners Ferry. And a low-scoring game, an extra point, cost Priest River the 7-6 loss at Timberlake. Well, welcome back to Kayla's Corner. Welcome, you, Dennis. Do you look good in green? I just came over here to ask you that. I, does my complexion look like it would look good in green? No, well, Keith doesn't look good in anything, so I'm hoping that you'll look good I'm in green. I'm a little scared right now. Right. Um, Keith looks great and everything. Yeah, I had to calm myself by taking a long trip down to the Palouse where uh, Pullman yes. was taking on Colville, and that Greyhound needs to learn some dance moves from me. Well, first quarter, Pullman strikes first. Cody Peterson with the screen pass to Cody Weber, who takes it. Down for 35 yards and a touchdown, 7 nothing Greyhounds. Colville would try to get something going. Sawyer Baldwell picked by Nate Swinger. The Greyhounds 
second. Business boys. Couple plays later, Jared Byers pounds it in from a yard out. Greyhounds up 14 nothing. But the Indians, what is up with this? They come back to win it 21 to 20. Wow. I got all the highlights, but the wrong highlights, I guess. Moving on to some greater Northern League play. Oh, no! Wow, 23 to 15, and I actually had just looked at the score before we started this. <laughs> Here it comes. Put that on. Yeah, the I guess I have to put this on. I'm uh -oh. like, can you give me a puke bucket? <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right, we'll see. We'll see how Kayla gets there. There you see Cheney, a 56-7 winner over Medical Lake in the Great Northern League tonight as well. well. We'll check back with Kayla in her corner and see how she looks over there in green. <laughs> I think her mascara is running. She's crying. <laughs> so we rode the Ben Kaplan Leadfoot Express 60 miles west to uh, Ritzville. This little Lynn Ritzville fan hoping for a win against Reardon. Right before the half, Indians up 6 nothing, but Nico Nezovich can't handle the low snap, picks it up, but he gets dropped. Broncos would score to take a 7-6 lead into the break. It stayed that way until late in the third. And Chris Pence takes the handoff. He's coming right into your living room, going to roll right on by. That's 44 yards, a huge play for the visitors, one of the biggest plays from scrimmage in the entire game. And Pence would capitalize on his big run right there, give it to the fellow. This touchdown from 10 yards out, giving Reardon a 12-7 lead, and that would be the final 12-7, as you can see there on your screen. And then also one more for you, Selkirk, uh, scoring a shutout by Republic, 20 to nothing. the final there. Kayla down to Colfax today as well. Not just Pullman, but also Colfax, who's been doing very well again this year. And Zach traded Kayla's broken drumstick for a hat. Maybe a good drumstick would have worked. And Kayla likes this team because the highlights continue to go. Ethan Smith lets Damian Howard know defense is boss down there. Alex Teed uh, finds uh, Will Hatley, who makes some moves. And Hatley is off to the races and into the end zone. 45 yards for a score. They're up big and more action in this one. This time on the option, pitch it out there. Nice, the thumb down. Remember, thumb down on the option. Into the end zone they go. Colfax wins this one big at home, 47-16. to 16. Other scores, I believe, yeah. Garpel, big win on the road over Dayton, 63 to nothing. DeSales, that's a pretty big win as well at home against Tico Oaksdale and Rosalia. Pomeroy has a hard time down in Asotin, who's been beating teams. Liberty Christian having a tough time on the road as well. Waitsburg Prescott with a big win. And also Kettle Falls over Newport. Track meet with huddles coming up. Eight-man football. Plus, we'll show you our iPod winner. And we'll show you the only one who can get into that East Valley jersey next on Friday Night Sports Extra. <laughs> Welcome back to Friday Night Sports Extra. That's right. Time to give away an iPod, and chances are, even though I sent you all those baby pictures of me, I did not win. No, you didn't, Ben. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and get to him right I was away. An ugly kid. What Kim Jorgensen, check out the arrow. Bonus points, our own Phil Franklin in the background. Phil, what are you doing? You're out of position. <laughs> we didn't see that highlight. Did you miss it? Nice picture, Kim. We appreciate it. Another finalist today from Moscow High School. The, the wrath of Moscow High School, if this was a team competition, they would be dominating. Amanda Scholl, nice picture here. That's Jen Henson on the soccer team uh, breaking away there. Steve T.D. of Colfax, look at this picture. That's uh, his son Alex T.D. running by, I would assume son, maybe some relation. The T.D.'s down there. That's a nice picture there. But our winner tonight, Jim Williams. Check that action picture out. Odessa's Ryan King right in the face. Jeez, that's a good action picture. Guess what? Jim Williams, you've got an iPod coming your way. How can you win an iPod just like Jim Williams? Go to our website, the big blue thing on the top. Click on Share Your Photos. Upload your photos from any high school event this fall. It can be college as well. you just got soccer, cross country, volleyball, football, whatever's going on, high school or college-wise, take your pictures, upload them to KXOY.com. You, too, could win an iPod. All right, well, I guess three hours and 15 minutes after, before I was in Ritzville, I was in Curlew, and that was uh, a lot of fun. And there we go. This Curlew <laughs> fan moving too slow to make it to the game. The Curlew cheerleaders trading a cheer for a hat. Let's listen in. All right, there. That works, but they wouldn't have much to cheer for on the field. Odessa's Randy Walker through the line and gone. Tigers lead at 14-0 after the two-point try was good. Moments later, Odessa. Yeah, that's right. Through the air this time, senior Ryan King up high to Nick Campbell, who gets in untouched, and this one kind of turning into a rout of Dave DeVoe's club. And Odessa would not stop there as the first quarter ends. King, the keeper, and he will not be stopped. Gets on through, gets in the end zone. Odessa ends it at the half, 52 to nothing. 
is the final of that one. Wilbur Crested and Hunters, Brittany and Krista <laughs> traded away a lion or lion head hats in order to get our hats. Hunters, Eli Bear takes the handoff. He gets tripped up at the five. Looked like he was gone, but don't worry, folks. He would get another chance because they give it right back to him. Who needs a tiger when you've got a bear? Pounds it for the touchdown. Seven nothing Lions. Here comes the big hit of the night. Marcos Morado going to toss it to Bear, and Bear goes, boom. Oh! Guess it's Cody Steven lowers the drawbridge on him. But guess what? This is where you earn your stripes, your paws, whatever. A few plays later, gets on into the end zone. And as you can see there, Hunters, big time winners, 40 to 18. Somebody pick up the phone. It's still ringing. <laughs> He caught the ball, though. Good wide Ooh. receivers always catch the ball. Nice job down there. Way to hold on to it. We sent Kayla out to Harrington, too. I sent her everywhere today. I was in charge. There's something you won't see tomorrow. A cougar and a duck getting along. Wow. That's a father and a son, too. Hornets were out there. They sting first. Tyrone Swan takes it in. Eight to nothing. Inchily. And Falcons trying to get something going. But quarterback Brett Larmar, he found the wrong guy. That's a good job there by Zachary Boyd for Inchilium and a couple plays later Tony Louie has no problem running up the middle for 30 yards and into the end zone they uh, go up by 14 at that point Inchilium goes on to win it big on the road against Sprague Harrington also tonight we had ACH uh, excuse me uh, Lackwash big win at home against Waterville we also had ACH winning 48 to nothing at home we also had Pateros uh, having a tough time against Cusick Cusick looks pretty good this year uh, Colton Pullman Christian gets the win on the road as well North Idaho eight-man football as well. Wallace taking on Kootenai tonight, a first-place battle. The winner, undisputed lead. Kootenai playing host to Wallace. They were cheering from the bell, and it was a jam-packed place. And watch Wallace, or I should say Kootenai, scores first. Colton Wilms with a 12-yard touchdown run. The two-pointer made it 8 nothing. but Wallace comes right back. Brandon Leeling finds Jared Beliski. Watch what he does. Makes the catch, breaks a tackle, and turns it into a 54-yard touchdown. That made it 8-6. to six. But after that, it would be all Kootenai. Wilms dumps it to Steve Cook. He does the rest. 23 yards into the end zone. This one, a big night. 46 points in the first quarter for Wallace. They cruise to the victory, stay unbeaten. Lakeside a winner at Clark Fork. Kenrick a big winner at home. Troy gets 20 points better on the road, and Prairie 50 to nothing. Now, I, we just want to show you one thing. Turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around. See the name on the back? Yeah, it's actually Keith's high school jersey. The reason I'm Kayla's wearing it and not Keith, you want to tell him? Because it doesn't fit him anymore. Yeah. And it smells like it's about 30 years old, Keith. <laughs> it is! I'm just joking. Well, it's that time of the show where we introduce you to our shining star in this week. Got a win, too. It's from Ferris. It is Aaron Rod Roberts, the senior outstanding student, holds down a 3.9 GPA, and now he's finishing up his high school career. I think me personally has brought kind of just a leadership role, and I don't think it's just me at all. We have a handful of seniors that have really stepped up and become leaders and just trying to get all the younger guys involved and trying to make it a, just a great team effort. If you want to nominate a shining star of your own, email us at shiningstar at kxly.com. Don't go anywhere. More Friday Night Sports Extra when we come back. 24 The college slate. The Cougs are at home. Homecoming with the Ducks. The Huskies at home as well. Playing Stanford. Looking for win number one. Idaho on the road at San Diego State. Eastern at home in a big sky opener. And Whitworth back-to-back -back trips to California. And don't forget, if you want to win one of these nifty iPods, uh, send your pictures to KXLY.com and just click up there in that big box on, under photos. Don't forget to join us tomorrow. Next week, Friday Night Sports Extra. We sent my old jersey to a museum, so hopefully it'll still be in there when we come back. <laughs> See you next week.